Okay, here we go. Okay, let's just get as much done as we can, how about? So, uh, we're going to look at, from the notes from, from last week, we, we talked about, you know, we talked about powers of I. You know, we did, we did some practice with taking I to different powers. This is easier stuff today, honestly. This, and this is probably more important, but easier. So, first thing is, what, we're, when we talk about what we call a complex number, a complex number in, in its standard form looks like this. A plus B times I, where I is that imaginary number we talked about last week. I is equal to the square root of what? Negative one. Negative one. Good. And so put this in your notes. This isn't part of the part of the notes, but write this on your notes. When we write a complex number in standard form like that, we call A the real part. Uh, and we call B the imaginary part. Yeah, that's new information. Apparently, Thompson sent me kids home that are copying. I'm calling parents. Thompson started copying. That's what I said. I was like, every time I pass Thompson, I'm going to call really hard. Come on. I mean, no, you don't want to miss this. This is good stuff. Anyway, there we go. So, real part, imaginary part. So, the, a mistake people oftentimes make is they, the real part is the part of the complex number that doesn't have i, obviously. But the imaginary part is just the coefficient of i. It doesn't include the i. Okay, it's just, just what's being multiplied by i. So, let's get a little bit of practice with that real quick. So, for example, in this complex number, what is the real part? Nothing. Remember, nothing's <laughs> Mathematically speaking, what's the real part? Negative 13. Negative 13. There you go. So negative 13 is the real part. What's the imaginary part? Negative 3i. Just negative 3. Oh. Just the coefficient of i. Okay? How about this one? What's the real part? Zero. Zero. Exactly. So if we were really what this... This is the way we write it in simplified form. But technically, if I were to write this in standard form and I write both parts, it's the same thing as saying 0 plus 5i. Okay, so we don't write the 0 there. I mean, because we don't write 0 plus something, we just ignore the 0. But it's there. The real part in this case is 0. And what's the imaginary part? 5. Good. Okay, so how about this one? What's the real part? Eight. eight. The real part is eight. And what's the imaginary part? <laughs> Zero. Yeah. Okay. And and so this is crazy, but every number you've ever used in your entire life up until last week, every number you've ever used could have been written this way, whatever the number was, plus zero i. There's always been this plus zero i that you never had, had any idea was even there, but it's there. Okay. So all these numbers here. Here's how they fall into the set of numbers that we're going to add to the set that we started talking about earlier in the year. Remember, we talked about real numbers earlier in the year, and I should have had that slide. I didn't think about that, but we had this set of all real numbers and we partitioned it off into the rationals and the irrationals. Right? The irrationals were the numbers that couldn't be written as a fraction. As decimals, what was true of the of the irrationals? Like pi, for example. If I write it as a decimal, what happens? It goes on forever without ever repeating. So it never repeats, it never terminates. Whereas any rational number that I write as a decimal either terminates or repeats, right? Like one third would be 0.3 repeating. One half would be 0.5 period. Right, it terminates. Okay, so we're going to add some stuff to that that uh, chart that we had previously, though. So now it turns out that that set of real numbers, which was everything we've ever used, is really just a subset of the actual set of all numbers, which is the set of complex numbers. Remember, complex numbers are all written in the form a plus b times i. Right. So typical complex numbers would be. Let's get all the phones away, please. Uh, so, typical complex numbers would be things like this. 
3 plus 2i. Now, this is complex. It's just not simplified. Right? We'd have to do the square root of 15 times i, wouldn't we? Yes, sir? Is there a bigger one? No, there's not. It's a good question. No, that's it. The set of complex numbers is everything. Okay. So what do we know, then, about the set of real numbers? If we're thinking about all these complex numbers that can be written in standard form, a plus bi, can you tell me something significant about the set of real numbers? What's true? What's true for every number that falls into the set of real numbers? We kind of just said it a second ago. If it terminates, it terminates. True, true. But even before that, like if we write it as a complex number, what's always going to be true for real numbers? They're always going to have. V is always zero, right? So the set of real numbers is the set of complex numbers where V is zero, where the, real, where the imaginary part is zero. What about the set of pure imaginary numbers? Pure imaginary numbers are the numbers that we dealt with last week. Those are numbers like i and 2i and maybe even pi times i or something. In this case, the pure imaginaries are going to be all the numbers that have no real part. But your typical everyday run-of-the-mill complex number has both a real part and an imaginary part. Okay? So for today, what we're doing is really simple. For today, all we're doing is we're going to practice adding and subtracting and multiplying complex numbers, which is a very easy thing to do. Here's the hint on this. When we're doing adding and subtracting and multiplying, here's the way to make this very simple. Just treat the i like a variable. Like x, for example. Okay. So what happens then if, if we're going to treat if we're going to treat i like a variable? Can you guys tell me, Kaylee, what would you do for like like for these numbers right here? And, and let's think for a second about why is it that we put parentheses around numbers to group them off? We need to group them, don't we? And why do we group numbers typically? Say it again. So you can say it again. Okay, okay, so there's one thing, because you want to you simplify those first. Uh, a lot of times they'll be grouped so that if, so we could like multiply something by everything inside here, right? If I put something out front, then I would have to know to distribute it. Or if I take something to a power, then I'm taking everything inside to that power. So those are mathematical reasons, but look, none of that stuff is being done here. Everybody see that? These are examples where nothing is... They are not being taken to a power, and there's no coefficient out in front of the quantities. So this is more a matter of convenience. Can anybody tell me why are we grouping these numbers together? Why are we grouping the negative 11 plus 3i together and the 9 plus 2i together? That's a good question. Those ones are fine. Okay, that, that might be true, but that's not why. They're set up in A plus B I format. There you go, because they're just complex numbers, right? So the only reason that they're being set aside here in parentheses is just because I've got this complex number plus this complex number. My point in, in having that conversation is, is just to point out that we don't really need the parentheses there, do we? We're not doing anything. They're just there for convenience so we can see that I've got one complex number plus another one, right? What do you think I do when I add these up? It's dead simple. Pretend the i is a variable. What would you do if it was an x? But if, I, if I'm adding these up, what do you mean by that? Combine like terms. That's it, isn't it? Right? So all I would have to do here is I'm going to combine the non-i terms, so the real parts. What's negative 11 plus 9? Negative 2. Negative 2. And then I'm going to combine the, the i terms. Right? So I get 3i plus 2i is done. That's it. Okay. Try, you do this one on your own real quick. Number two, what do you get? There you go. 11 minus 4i. I like this. Done. Easy, right? Okay, so what's going to be the only additional step now if I'm subtracting complex numbers? Like, what would you do? Here, Marcus, what would you do if I gave you this problem with x's? Ignore all the stuff we're doing now. What if I gave you the problem, oh, let's say, 
3 minus 2x minus the quantity 7 minus 5x. What would you do? Yeah, good. You distribute to negative and then add like terms, wouldn't you? So we would just do that and get 3 minus 2x minus 7 plus 5x and then just combine like terms and we're done, right? So, Molly, what are we going to do for this one then? There you go. We're going to distribute the negative. And I can get rid of, there's nothing being distributed here, so I can just get rid of those parentheses. And so I end up with 7 minus 2i minus 2, what? Minus 6i. Okay, and so now what am I going to get? 5 when I combine the real parts and minus 8i, yeah, piece of cake, right? Okay, so the only difference then when we're multiplying instead of adding and subtracting, well, I'll tell you what, let's do one as an example first. Let's just do number 5. What am I going to do with number 5? Distribute. Yeah, I'm just going to distribute the 2i. And that's going to give me what? What's 2i times 8? 16i. What's 2i minus 3i? Ah, negative 6i squared. Okay, but from the other day, there was something really important we said about i squared. What's i squared equal to? Negative 1. Yeah. No. I squared is negative 1. Remember why that's the case. Because I equals the square root of negative 1. So I squared equals the square root of negative 1 squared. So it's just canceling the square root, right? So I squared is always equal to negative 1. And so what are we going to do here then? Well, that's like saying 16i minus 6 times negative 1. Well, what's negative 6 times negative 1? Positive 6. Yeah. So really, all this does, whenever I get an i squared, you can make this kind of a shortcut. Whenever I get an i squared, I just know that's going to change the sign of that term. And I'm going to replace the i squared with a negative 1, which just changes the sign of the term. Right? Now, if I want to write my answer in standard form, a plus bi, how should I write this? I always want to put the real part first, right? Yeah. There it is. Okay. So let's try another one. Try number 8. Try number 8. Take a second and try it on your own, then we'll do it together. Oh, yeah, yeah, you bet. Yeah, it's a pretty small set. So it's, it's two, the quantity 2 minus 4i right? times the quantity negative 5 minus x. You betcha. Okay, so, so what do we get here? If I distribute the 2, what am I getting? Negative 10 minus 6i. If I distribute the negative 4i, what's negative 4i times negative 5? Plus 20i, good. And then finally, what's negative 4i times negative 3i? And what am I going to do with that i squared? I'm just going to make that a negative, aren't I? Right? I'm going to cancel that i squared and just make this 
a negative instead of a positive, right? And so then I end up with the terms negative 10 minus 6i plus 20i minus 12, right? And if I combine like terms, negative 10 minus 12 is negative 22, right? And negative 6i plus 20i is plus 14i, and that's my answer. Okay. So what would I do, what if I take something like a, a complex number to a power, like a complex number squared? How would I have to rewrite number 9? <clears throat> the quantity 6 minus 2i squared. Write twice, exactly. 6 minus 2i times 6 minus 2i, do the same thing. Okay. Here's the granddaddy of malts, try number 10. make this a little bit. Okay, so let's try this one on for size here. Okay, Ellen, what'd you do for this one? Share, share your plan here. Okay, so we boiled it out first. We're going to distribute the one. If we distribute the one, we're going to get. What's that? Nine, everybody agree? Nine plus three I. If I distribute the seven I, I'm going to get plus 63 I. And what's I squared become? Negative 21. Negative 21, good. So then this one is going to become, Gabe, okay, we're talking, you guys were talking over there, plus 3i, plus 63i, minus 21. And then while we're at it, what'd you do with this with this other term over here? We distribute, and we got minus 4, minus 2i. And then all we got to do now is combine like terms, right? So I've got a 9 minus 21 minus 4. So what is that? Negative It's going to give me negative 12. So negative 16, everybody agree? Yeah. So when I combine all the real parts, I get minus 16. I've got 3i plus 63i is 66i minus 2i plus 64i. And that's it. Everybody good? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm going to – I realize that I, I left town on Friday right after practice, and I didn't have internet all weekend, and I realized